And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the expansion for Sleeping Gods, Tides of Ruin. Now, we've all gone over Sleeping Gods. You know that here at the Dice Tower, we all really enjoy this game. A big story-driven campaign-style game that you can play through. It's a really long game, but you can play through it in sections. What Tides of Ruins adds is more stuff. This is clearly an expansion that was designed at the same time as the base game. How do you know this? Because there is a map here that comes in the base game that shows you all the maps, and some of these maps aren't in the base game. They're, but they're on this main map because they know if you buy the base game, you're likely going to get this. This also includes an arcade mode. Nowadays, the word roguelike game is very popular. Many people like this, where you go through and randomize encounters come and you level up, etc. Well, that's what they try to turn this game into. So you might want to get it for the extra stuff, or you might want to get it for the arcade mode. Let's take a look. I'm going to try not to spoil much of anything here, folks. It's going to add more supply cards, more event cards, more quest cards, and more adventure cards, and even more monster cards. I'll do one little spoiler. Ooh, a spider. All right. So you have this extra book here, and this has maps. So there are several maps in the book here. You can see all these different maps. And I've marked in the main game this and these three bottom ones here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the eight new pages worth of maps here, except there is page 30 to 31, which are nowhere on this map. How do you get there? I don't know. Actually, I do know, but the point of it is you don't know how to get there. So this, you just have to look in here. It will tell you to go to a number, and if for some reason you can't find that number in your map book, then hey, you know it's in the expansion map book. The game also comes with the whole new book, and most of this book is taken up in the fact that it has new stories and stuff to match these new maps and things like that, and to give you the new adventure cards and the new quest cards. But there's also an arcade mode in this game. So if you don't want to play through the long story game, you can play an arcade game. Although for the life of me, I don't know why you would play, for example, the ultimate arcade game, which is five hours or so, when you literally can just play the normal game. But this is if you want kind of a randomized game. And you're going to take this deck of arcade mode cards, and you have challenge cards, which have your typical challenges from the game. You have fighting cards, where you're going to fight specific enemies, combat cards. And then you have reward cards, where you will get a number of the rewards listed on the card, depending on how easy of a mode you're playing on. And you're going to take some of each and then you stack them in a very specific way and go through these cards. And so I could see, you know, you, you flip over a card, it's a reward card. You flip over sea monsters, you find enemy six, eight, and nine. Uh, you flip over this, you see a beautiful island in the distance, surely there could be nothing wrong with a, a visit. And you do a perception six. So you're just, instead of going through the book, you're going through a deck of cards. So this is just another way to play the game that I imagine few people will do. All the components for the game are inter, you know, you can't even tell the difference. I'm showing you here the box that has all the uh, quest cards and all the adventure cards. And you can see it fits everything from the expansion. There's even room to spare. Expansion number two. Now, I will say this. The rule book for this, there is no rule book. You get this book here, and in the beginning it says, okay, here is the arcade mode. Great. And new concepts and how these final, final score. And then you find your stories. Where's a list of the components? Folks, there isn't a list of components. And there's no marking on the cards. This is an expansion that's meant to be thrown in the base game and forgotten that it's even part of the base game. There's both good and bad with that. The good is obviously you don't have to, you put it in, you forget about it. And it's the base game was made to fit everything inside it. The bad is that, you know, I guess if you're someone who wants to count cards or maybe separate it out, but you don't need to separate it out. Still, it's a bit surprising that there's not a list of components on the first page here, or even how to integrate this expansion. Just throw everything in. Just a simple phrase like that, I think, would have been helpful. 
Now, here's an unusual thing in a sense that I really think if you like Sleeping Gods, you should get this. This feels like it's just a natural extension of the base game. It adds a ton of maps. You don't need this. You don't need to get this. You'll be fine for a while, but this does add a ton more stuff. I want it just because it in makes the encounters and the market deck even more diversified. For that alone, I'm interested, but the fact that there's a whole pile of totems that are only in the base game, I mean, that are only in the expansion, there's just more stuff, more story. It's written really well, just like the base game. It integrates very seamlessly, a lot of fun. The arcade mode, pfft, who cares? I'm really surprised that this arcade mode even exists. Who wants to play through this game without the story? I like Sleeping Gods. I think a lot of the mechanisms are really interesting. But if you take out the story, I wouldn't play the game. Like, straight up. I don't want to play this arcade mode. I don't want to turn over some cards and do just the mechanisms of the game. And I'm struggling to think of why I would recommend anyone do that. You want to do something like that, then play a game that's, I don't know, near and far as an arcade mode, also designed by Ryan Lockett, but I think that one works better because the storyline in that game isn't as critical to the enjoyment of the game. Is there anyone out there playing Sleeping Gods going, the game is good, it's amazing. I just wish the story wasn't getting in the way. No? So you say, well, Tom, you can play through it quicker. I suppose, but then just play a different game. It's not, I mean, the combat here is interesting, although I wasn't a huge fan of it. The, the challenges are what they are. It's, if you're gonna take Sleeping Gods and reduce it to a mechanical thing, this arcade mode almost feels like it was designed as a response to make a few people happy. But I would say the vast majority of people aren't gonna care about it because it takes out the best part of the game. Now, I say all that. Still, I think you should get this expansion. I still think this expansion is great. I just don't care about the arcade mode cards. The rest of it's fine, and I almost wish they hadn't printed the arcade mode cards and instead put in uh, more, more uh, event cards and more things like that. So I have a few things. Like I said, I don't think the arcade mode's worth it. I wish they had put in the rule book, how many things come with this expansion. Stuff like that's nice. But other than that, I still think it's fantastic. It adds more stuff, more stories, some really cool things happen in this part of the world, which I can't really talk about, that I thought was really fun. So that's Sleeping God's Tides of Ruin. You don't need it, but you know you're going to get it. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent.